Meet Elizabeth Beatty and Denise Wong, PhD students at the University of Pennsylvania. If you view this through uh, kind of a different type of lens than you're used to and kind of stretch your idea of what bacteria are, they're not necessarily all harmful. Despite how it looks, Beatty and Wong aren't biologists. They're roboticists who view bacteria as a tool for building microscopic robots. They're controllable with environmental stimuli, and they are capable of sensing their environment. They're very easy to grow, um, they're easy to maintain, and they have very efficient motors, much more efficient than anything that we've been able to create at such a small scale thus far. So just like using propellers or wheels on the macro scale, uh, we can use bacteria as micromotors at the micro scale to propel synthetic objects. Individually, single-celled bacteria don't have much power, but when they're in a swarm, they become hyperflagellated, so they develop multiple of these tails that propel the cell body, and they're moving as kind of a collective group of autonomous agents. It's in this swarming state that Beatty and Wong attach them to synthetic structures to build a robot. So to make the structures, we have a photo mask that has holes in it, and then we shine a light uh, over the mask onto our glass slide. Which is covered in a plastic compound. The tiny areas that were exposed to the light bake and harden into the microstructures. These are then pressed onto a sticky swarming mass of bacteria, and then those are dissolved into a droplet. So when the bacteria are all attached, different shapes allow us to study the different forces and torques that are being applied to the structure. In the case of the gear-shaped microstructures, the direction of the, that the gear teeth are pointing in allows us to get either a clockwise-oriented rotation of the gear or a counterclockwise orientation of the gear. They also take advantage of the bacteria's natural sensing ability. So one of the methods we know to do this is to use a blue light or near blue light that can cause bacteria to continuously tumble. By blasting light at the structure's edge, Beatty and Wong can get even finer control of the micro-robot's motion. So they're no longer exerting that propulsive swimming force. These are small steps towards gaining precise control of their robots that would ideally be aided with the help of synthetic biology. In order to make an ideal bacteria, kind of an all-in-one package that could exhibit very reliable sensing and very powerful motion. Now, if all of that sounds like the ominous start of a micro-cyborg movie, the researchers assure you that they have no intentions of world domination. So you could imagine sending in a micro-robot um, to deliver some type of pharmaceutical drug to a certain area of the body. They naturally sense uh, organic stimuli already, and so you put a lot of microstructures in an organic waste bucket to see what's inside. And if their benevolent goals still don't put you at ease, consider this. Oh, I sleep easy. Um, bleach kills 99.9% .9 of them. <laughs> For Science Friday, I'm Luke Groskin.